Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Stabenn County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 100. This is the Friday, May 27th, 2022 edition of Library Connections. Jumping right in with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times at number one, In the Blood by Jack Carr, the fifth book in the Terminal List series. James Reese goes after the killer of a Mossad operative attached to the CIA at number two. Book Lovers by Emily Henry. While on vacation in North Carolina, a literary agent keeps running into an editor. At number three, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife, raised in a violent home, attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. At number four, where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. In a quiet town on the North Carolina coast in 1969, a young woman who survived alone in the marsh becomes a murder suspect. And at number five, Verity by Colleen Hoover. Low and Ashley is hired by the husband of an injured writer to complete her popular series, and she uncovers a horrifying truth. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week, at number one, The Office BFFs by Jenna Fisher and Angela Kingsey. Two stars of The Office celebrate the comedy series and their friendship. At number two, Phil by Alan Shipnook, an unauthorized biography of the golf champion, Phil Mickelson. At number three, Killing the Killers by Bill O'Reilly and Martin Duggard. The 11th book in the conservative commentator's Killing series gives an account of the global war against terrorists. At number four, River of the Gods by Candace Millard, the story of the hardships encountered during 19th century expeditions in Africa and the complicated partnerships behind them. And at number five, Finding Me by Viola Davis. The multiple award-winning actress describes the difficulties she encountered before claiming her sense of self and achieving professional success. Before I jump in with our first recommended read of the week, I just want to note this is a first in the history of Library Connections. It's the first ever completely nonfiction edition of Library Connections. And I'm not going to do this every week, but as a tip of the hat to nonfiction fans out there, every so often I will do a completely nonfiction edition moving forward. It occurred to me in the last couple of weeks I should do that. So next week we'll have fiction titles as well as nonfiction titles, but for this week everything's nonfiction. And having said that, let's jump in with the first recommended read of the week. It's called Already Toast, Caregiving and Burnout in America by Kate Washington. Journalist Washington's timely debut chronicles how quickly she and her husband's lifestyle shifted from married professionals and parents to caregiver and patient after her husband's diagnosis of a rare form of lymphoma. From 2016 to 2018, Washington served as a full-time aide to her husband, which had her battling insurance companies, 
making hospital appointments, and managing his care at home, all while trying to eke out a little extra time for herself. While working diligently as a caregiver, Washington felt alone, not realizing that there are thousands of others in similar positions all across the United States. The author highlights the necessity for providing more resources to caregivers, especially as baby boomers age. Nearly three quarters of caregivers are women, which underscores the importance of reform and the societal expectations that place women at the heart of caregiving. Washington also takes care to explore the racial dynamics of caregiving, with the Black and Latinx women often serving in caregiving roles while also caring for children. Verdict. This moving, relatable story is sure to resonate with patrons who, if not already serving as a caregiver, may find themselves taking on that role soon enough. A recommended purchase for library collections, and that's the Library Journal Review. And it is a decent book, but the number one reason I selected it is to let anyone out there know who is a caregiver who is feeling kind of alone. You are not alone. There are hundreds of thousands of us across the country who are providing care to family members, including children and aging parents. So don't feel like you're alone. You're not. Our second recommended read of the week is a more upbeat title. It's called Secrets of the Spracker by Elizabeth Reed. It's subtitled, Iceland's Extraordinary Women and How They Are Changing the World. Reed, a Canadian who is married to the president of Iceland, combines memoir, feminist history, and travelogue in this immersive look at what makes her adopted home the planet's finest country for women. Spracker, of the title, refers to an ancient Icelandic term for extraordinary or outstanding women. Among them, former President Vinis Fingboder, the world's first democratically elected female head of state in 1980, and Jamaican immigrant Claudia Ashani Wilson, who in 2016 became the first foreign-born woman to pass the bar exam and qualify as a practicing attorney in Iceland. Reed also recounts meeting her future husband, historian Gundi Johansson, while studying at Oxford in 1998 and she recounts his meteoric rise to the presidency after the 2016 Panama Papers scandal implicated the country's prime minister and cabinet members. Throughout, Reed reflects on Iceland's history, generous paternal leave policy, and strengths as a nation of less than 370,000 people. She notes of the populace change is easier to demand, to implement, and to measure while governing, by self-government of course, that number of people. The author also offers an intimate look at her career and life as a mother of four. Laced with frank discussions of domestic abuse, intersectionality, and other complex issues, this is a winning portrait of a country at the forefront of the fight for gender equality. Top-notch book. And that, of course, is the Publisher's Weekly Review. Moving on to our first audiobook recommendation for this week, it's the new memoir, Finding Me, by the actress Viola Davis. And the audio is read by the actress. Davis is the first African-American actress to achieve an Academy Award, an Emmy, and two Tony Awards, known collectively as the Triple Crown of Acting. Still, few know the paths she took to overcome 
a complicated past and find purpose in her life. Finding Me is a reflective memoir about her childhood and college years in Central Falls, Rhode Island, studying at Juilliard and her early acting years in New York City. Davis closely examines how she dealt with poverty, domestic abuse, molestation, and racism throughout her early years. As a teenager, acting became a vehicle that helped her release childhood trauma. Yet, because she experienced so much pain, she could not understand self-love, nor could she ever feel worthy of any of her accomplishments. Still, she did thrive due to her close bonds with her family, especially her sisters, along with tremendous support from educators, acting coaches, and friends. Davis gives readers hope, encouraging us to look back and embrace childhood dreams or failures, let go of shame, and move forward to become the best version of ourselves. High demand backstory. Davis's legions of fans will be eager to read and talk about her candid, challenging, and inspiring memoir. And that's the book list review. Our second audiobook recommendation for this week is the memoir Prague Winter, a personal story of remembrance and war, 1937 to 1948 by Madeline Albright. The audio is read by the author. The author's childhood reminiscences of her first 11 years and savvy grasp of history inform this absorbing account of Czechoslovakia's travails and Albright family suffering in the Holocaust. The daughter of a diplomat in the Czech government who migrated from Prague to wartime exile in London and back to post-war Prague, former Secretary of State Albright sketches lively collections of weathering the Blitz and other adventures. But her narrative mainly investigates things hidden from her as a child. Raised a Catholic, Albright famously learned of her Jewish ancestry in middle age. She pens a moving portrait of life in the model ghetto at Terezin, near Prague, through which her relatives passed on their way to death camps. Centering the book is a searching diplomatic history of Czechoslovakia's interwar democracy, which was abandoned to Hitler by the West and then snuffed out by Soviet-backed communists. The story is enriched by Albright's colorful thumbnails of Eduard Benez, Jan Mazarek, and other principals, and by her insight into geopolitics, which yields sympathetic but clear-eyed assessments of the compromise statesmen made to accommodate the ruthless powers surrounding Czechoslovakia, showing us villainy, heroism, and agonizing moral dilemmas. Albright's vivid storytelling and measured analysis bring this tragic era to life. And that's the Starred Publishers Weekly Review. And I have read this one. It's very good. I've also listened to the audiobook. And the author, the author was a great narrator, so I highly recommend this one. So for our streaming recommendations, I'm going to briefly recommend six documentaries and in alphabetical order, because not surprisingly, as a librarian, I like things to be in alphabetical order. I have to say, though, looking at the popcorn on the screen there, I also am thinking popcorn sounds pretty good right about now, but I'm digressing. So let's get to our streaming recommendations for this week. The first is the 13th from 2016, available through Netflix. It's the Ava DuVernay documentary that tells the story of American slavery and its long-lasting impacts 
many of which still resonate today. In the wake of the Black Lives Matter movement, this should be mandatory viewing, and that overview is from CNET. Our second recommended stream for this week is Bob Ross, Happy Accidents, Betrayal, and Greed. This is a 2021 Netflix documentary, so let me tell you about it. When you think of Bob Ross, you probably think calming, joyful brush strokes, trees, and nature, and maybe even of his signature afro. But a new Netflix doc paints a more sinister portrait of the beloved painter's legacy, examining the complicated legal battles that have ensued over the use of Bob Ross's name following his 1995 death. And that's the Esquire review. Our third recommended stream is Dawson City, Frozen Time from 2017. This one is available from a variety of sources. You can rent it through Amazon, Apple, Google, or Vudu, or stream it if you have a Canopy or Ovid subscription. In Dawson City, Frozen Time, Bill Morrison winds his way through the complicated story of how 372 silent titles were rescued when they were accidentally discovered during a dig in Dawson City, Canada in 1978. They had the good fortune to be preserved by the Yukon permafrost. And that's the New York Times overview. Our fourth recommended stream is the new PBS documentary, Flood in the Desert. This was just released and it's part of PBS's American Experience series. The documentary explores the 1928 dam collapse of Los Angeles County's St. Francis Dam, the second deadliest disaster in California history. A colossal engineering failure, the dam was built by William Mulholland, who had ensured the growth of Los Angeles by bringing water to the city via aqueduct. And that's the PBS review. Our fifth recommended stream is the 2020 documentary, My Octopus Teacher, available through Netflix. My Octopus Teacher follows Craig Foster, a filmmaker who spent a year snorkeling and interacting with an octopus off the coast of South Africa. It's a nature film, sure, but it's simultaneously a documentary designed to inspire awe in the viewer. In short, octopi are incredible. Little aliens on Earth, essentially. This is the story of a relationship between humans and nature, but it's also an inspiring call to action. Don't ignore the wonder that exists all around you. And that's the CNET review. And our sixth and final streaming recommendation is a classic from 2019. This is the David Attenborough production, Our Planet. Briefly, explore our planet's natural beauty and examine how climate change impacts all living creatures in this ambitious documentary of spectacular scope. That's the Netflix synopsis of the doc, and I agree with that, but I have to say, if you haven't ever seen this, I know it's a couple of years old now, 2019, but it's the visuals are outstanding. So if you have seen it, you know that, and you haven't seen it, you might want to watch it just for the visuals, which are out of this world. Moving on to our Hoopla recommendation for this week, and actually, I'm going to recommend 21 videos. I'm going to recommend all the streaming videos that Ken Burns has done that are available through Hoopla. And you see most of them there. We've got the one on Thomas Jefferson, the Civil War, Mark Twain, Muhammad Ali, the Jazz and World War II series. So if you're looking for Ken Burns documentaries, check out all 21 of them available through Hoopla. And moving on to our next section, Next Week at the Library. This is a brief listing of the upcoming programs and events being held at or through the library. 
for the week ahead of us. That's the week of May 29th through June 4th, 2022. This information can also be found online. Simply visit the library's website found at ssclibrary.org. And when you get to our homepage, you'll see a great big link that says calendar. Click on that and you'll be able to look at all the programs that are this week, next week, and for several months to come. Just a beginning note, registration is required for programs unless otherwise specified or unless the program is available through an online platform like YouTube or Facebook. Those programs, obviously, you can check out at any time. You can register for programs through the library's website by calling the library or just dropping by. On Monday, May 30th, the library is closed in observance of Memorial Day. So in between your Memorial Day activities, happy reading. On Tuesday, May 31st, we have two programs in library land. First, Adult Scrabble from 9 to 11 a.m. This program is held in the library's reading room. Secondly, we have Miss Sue's Storytime, which is a hybrid program now. It runs from 10 to 10.30 a.m. and is held both on Facebook Live and at Fallbrook Park. On Wednesday, June 1st, we have two programs at the library. One is Mei Zhang, which is from 1 to 3 p.m. And the second is a hybrid program. It's the Courting Adult Writers Group, which runs from 6 to 8 p.m. And it's held both at the library and via Zoom. To register for that program, and for Mei Zhang as well, for that matter, you contact Michelle Wells at the library. On Thursday, June 2nd, there are no programs in library land. Happy reading. On Friday, June 3rd, we have four items to bring your attention to. The first is the monthly book review by Michelle Wells, which you can access through Michelle's writer's blog found at melorajohnson.wordpress.com. The second program is Science Time with Miss Abby. The location is Facebook Live. That runs from 10 to 10.30 a.m. Then at 1 p.m. is the debut of the new edition of Library Connections, which you can access through Facebook and on YouTube. And then finally, from 5 to 6.30 p.m., we have a great young adult program, Window Painting with Philomena Jack, which is being held at the library. You do have to register for that one. So you contact Kayla Crane at the library or register through the library's website. And on Saturday, June 4th, it's the kickoff of the Friends of the Library Summer Book Sale. The book sale hours are 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. On June 4th, it's a members only day, but not to worry if you're not a member, you can join at the door. The week ahead of this, that is the next week, Monday, June 6th to Friday, June 10th, the hours are 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. The book sale is being held at the library in the library's community room. And briefly, here's the listing of the library program's contacts. Should you have any questions about any program or wish to register by email or phone, Here's the listing. Have questions about this weekly video cast? Let me know. You can send me an email. My email address is rhymerl at stls.org. That's R E I M E R L at stls.org. Or you can always drop by the library. Have questions about this weekly video cast? Let me know. You can send me an email. My email address is rhymerl at stls.org. That's R-E-I-M-E-R-L at stls.org. Or you can always drop by the library. Library hours. An important thing to know, the library is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we're closed on Sundays. The library's website is found at ssclibrary.org. You can find a whole host of useful information on our website. To offer you a Cliff Notes version, today I'm just going to talk about three sections of our homepage that will allow you to access cool stuff. The first 
is the link that says calendar on our homepage. If you click that or tap it, you'll be redirected to our calendar of events where you can register for programs and see what's going on both in the library and also the remote programming we have. If you click on the word catalogs, a menu will open that will allow you to access all the library's catalogs for both physical content like print books and digital content like ebooks. And then if you click on the resources menu link seen at the top of the page there, also bordered in red, a menu will open and you can do a bunch of stuff through that menu. You can register to vote. You can access anti-racism resources. But today I want to direct you to the research and learning page on our website. So that's the third option on the resources menu, research and learning. And if you click or tap that, the research and learning page will display. And this lists some of the most popular databases that we offer, otherwise known as online research resources. But I find that a mouthful. So basically these are credible research resources, which I'm going to refer to as databases from now on. And these are available to you as a card holder, but they're not free to everyone everywhere. You get them as a card holder, but the library and or the library system pays for these. And through our website, through the research and learning page on our website, you find some of the most popular ones you can access, including Mango Languages, if you want to learn another language, even Pirate, and the Heritage Quest resource or database and that's for genealogical research and those are great resources and if you're going to do really in-depth research though you want to go all the way down to the bottom of the page in the last little paragraph there it says would you like to find more databases and resources and then below that little paragraph in purple it says find the complete list of STLS databases here that's the link you want to click on if you're doing in-depth research it's going to redirect you to the databases page on the STLS website and you see a photo of the top portion of that page on the right side of your screen. So here we see a large portion of the list of databases that you can access for in-depth research on tons of topics, criminal justice, the culinary arts, diversity, gender studies. There's a health database. If you wanna do health research, there's one on opposing viewpoints. If you have to write a paper on a subject that has two sides to the story, which is usually the case, you can look at that. There are several academic resources if you're a college or high school student doing research. There's even one on gardening and landscaping, on the hospitality industry, and a home improvement collection too. So lots of stuff on the STLS databases page, which you can access through our website, or you can go directly to that page by typing www.stls.org forward slash databases into your web browser. StarCat and the BookMine app. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials available to all card holders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library System, otherwise known as STLS. STLS encompasses the public libraries in Steven, Shimong, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties. You can access StarCat online at starcat.stls.org. That's S-T-A-R-C-A-T dot stls.org. Or, as you might imagine, there's an app for that. It's called BookMine, and it's spelled a little differently. It's B-O-O-K-M-Y-N-E and that will give you direct access to StarCat through your mobile device, and you can find the BookMine app in your app store. The Digital Catalog and its companion app Libby. The Digital Catalog 2 is available to all card holders of all Southern Tier Library System member libraries, and you can find it online at stls.overdrive.com, or you can download the Libby app found in your app store to your mobile device. The digital catalog features ebooks, audiobooks, and a handful of streaming videos. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features ebooks, comic books, full length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. 
All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout for Southeast Bend County Library card holders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. And if you're listening to this and you're thinking and watching this and you're thinking, well, why is it just for Corning Library card holders or SSC Library card holders? That's because this particular service, Hoopla, is one that the Southeast Bend County Library pays for. The others the digital catalog and of course StarCat are collection wide catalogs and all member libraries contribute to them. So that's what the difference is. If you want to check out the Hoopla catalog online, you go to hooplaDigital.com and of course there's an app, Hoopla, for your mobile device. Communicating with the library. If you have questions about library services, you are welcome always to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's phone number is 607-936-3713. You can also connect with the library through social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs. The library has five blogs we'd like to draw your attention to. There's the Book Club for Adults blog, which is found at sscl.book.club and is pretty much what you would expect. It's information about the monthly book club for adults. There's the Corning NY History blog, which is our local history blog, which is found at CorningNYHistory.com. Creation Stationery, the Creative Makerspace blog, found at CreationStationery.com. Library blogs. The library has five blogs we'd like to draw your attention to. There's the Book Club for Adults blog, which is found at sscl.book.club, and is pretty much what you would expect. It's information about the monthly Book Club for Adults. There's the Corning NY History blog, which is our local history blog, which is found at CorningNYHistory.com. Creation Stationery, the Creative Makerspace blog, found at CreationStationery.com. Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells, which is found at storymusings.blogspot.com, and Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory blog, which you may have guessed is hosted by yours truly, which is found at ssctech.com. And briefly, our references of the week and our catalog information. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week.